Hello, I'm Salma Meher and I'm a diabetes dietitian working in the NHS. Welcome to five things you need to know about eating well with diabetes. Eating healthy, balanced meals is such an important part of managing your diabetes. But some people still struggle turning this into long-term habit. But this is actually one area of diabetes where being Pakistani can put you at an advantage. One of the beauties of our culture is that many of us cook fresh food from scratch every single day, meaning a few small changes to these dishes are easier to implement. And while some of us are very protective over certain recipes, Pakistani people have typically traveled and settled all over the world. So it only makes sense that our food would adapt, survive and thrive a few changes here and there. And that's all we're talking about. Simple swaps that can make a big difference to your diabetes. Take biryani. You don't have to make too many changes. Just swap white rice for brown rice and substitute some of the salt for spices. Swap potatoes for vegetables or eggs. And this Pakistani staple is suddenly a healthy, balanced meal. Equally, boil the potatoes instead of frying. And your bowl of aloo chaat is just as delicious, but far better for your diabetes. It's best to leave fried dishes like pakore and masala fish as treats on special occasions. We all need a little fat in our diet, but too much saturated fat can lead to weight gain and heart problems, which will only make managing your diabetes more difficult than it needs to be. It's also really important you're aware of the amount of food you're eating. Even with relatively healthy dishes like biryani, and we'll come on to portion size shortly. There are some dishes like dal and vegetable curry that don't need many changes at all. Aside from keeping an eye on the amount of salt and oil you're using, ultimately, it often comes back to what you eat with these dishes. Reducing the portion of rice and number of chapatis can make all the difference, which is why it's often easier to focus on the right ingredients, food type and simple swaps that mean you can still eat the same dishes as before without worrying about how they might affect your diabetes. There's no need to demonize sugar. In fact, naturally occurring sugars are often found in the fruit and vegetables we should be eating each day, ranging from watermelon and dates to carrots, capsicums and mooli. Just be aware that the quantity of fruit is significant and can still raise your blood sugar levels. Equally, we all need carbohydrates as part of our daily diet. And while you should be aware of how much you're eating, the type and quantity is what really matters, which means simple swaps like choosing leaner meats, like chicken over red meat, like lamb, switching out ghee for sunflower or rapeseed oil, and making chapatis with wholemeal atta means you can manage your blood sugar levels better and make a huge difference to your health without your taste buds noticing too much. And once you've mastered switching these few simple ingredients, you can turn your attention to portion size. And it's far simpler than you might think. So starchy carbohydrates like potatoes, chapati and rice form the basis of many traditional dishes, and that doesn't have to change. But what's really important is understanding one portion is no larger than a heap handful. This is very different to eating a whole plate of rice, as many of us are used to. The reality is that if you're trying to lose weight, starchy carbs should take up no more than a quarter of your plate. So you need to decide between rice and chapatis, rather than eating both with the same meal. And when it comes to meat or chicken, a single portion is the size of your palm, equally with fish, as long as it's not fried. It's a great source of vitamins and minerals, but one portion should be the size of your hand. If this sounds daunting, don't worry. Reducing the amount you eat can be done gradually, and there are healthy ways to avoid still feeling hungry after a meal. You can replace much of the rice with vegetable dishes, 
such as spinach, cauliflower, and dal, or chickpeas. Just be aware of how much oil and salt you're using. Yogurt, chaat, and salad can also help ensure you're eating a healthy, balanced, satisfying meals. A great simple guide is to create the most colorful plate you can, and you're unlikely to go far wrong. It's impossible to discuss food and diabetes without mentioning the big decision around fasting. For many Pakistanis, this is perhaps the defining scenario where they feel truly caught between their diabetes and their faith. It's a nuanced topic that is deserving for its own video, so we're just going to stick to the facts. You can be exempt from fasting if you have a medical condition like diabetes, so you do not have to fast. Fasting can be dangerous if you have diabetes as it can cause health problems. Ultimately, it's a personal choice, but it's absolutely vital that you speak to your diabetes team before deciding whether to fast for Ramadan to understand if it's safe for you. Speaking to an imam who understands about diabetes can also help. This brings us to the fifth and final thing you need to know about eating well with diabetes which some may think has nothing to do with it at all. Making the choice to move more. Eating healthy balanced meals is a vital part of managing your condition, but without regular physical activity. All those healthy habits you've worked so hard to develop won't have nearly as much impact because moving more is really, really important too. And the same small achievable changes you can apply to the food you eat are transferable to becoming more active. Whether it's a walk around the park, a spot of gardening, or a good old game of football. Take the final step to a healthier future by blending the simple ways to eat well with a small achievable increase in your activity. So those were the five things you need to know about eating well with diabetes. One, simple swaps can make a big difference. Two, focus on the right ingredients. Three, keep an eye on portion size. Four, speak to your healthcare team before fasting. And five, make the choice to move more.